Welcome to this video about the Error Instruments Loopman. This is a Loopman version 2. It has an additional feature called Loop here, which I'm really not completely sure of what it's for, but I'll show you what I've discovered in the video. Loopman is a Walkman mounted onto a Eurorack panel. It has inputs and outputs, a built-in low-pass gate that you can trigger. There's a light-sensitive sensor in here, and you can control the speed of the motor using a knob here in the center, or CV. The controls for this Walkman are on top. These are just your regular Walkman controls for those who haven't lived through the 90s. There's a play and record knob. There's rewind, forward, and stop. On the side here of Loopman, you can switch this thing to being a radio. But nowadays, you have to be really lucky to pick up something even remotely clear. So, in this video, I will take you through my Loopman workflow. Along the way, I will show you the different features of this contraption here. And thank you very much to Error Instruments for sending me this unit. And without much further ado, let's get on with the video. So I made this patch using a clone of rings through beats. Everything is in mono, by the way. And I want to record this on a loop man. This is my workflow. First I unplug the output of beats from the mixer. And you want to connect this signal to the input on Loopman. But because Loopman is really just a crappy Walkman fixed onto a Eurorack panel, it's really just designed for line levels and really not for modular levels. So if you would route this straight into the input jack for Loopman, it would completely distort and saturate the cassette in here. And in most cases, it would be a lot more cassette saturation than you want. So what you can do is use one of these flying attenuators or just any old attenuator you have in your case to attenuate the signal very much. So you connect the output of whatever sound you want to record in a loopman to an attenuator and then you connect this signal into the input. Now, of course, we're still not hearing anything. Now, to hear what we're sending into Loopman, we need to connect the through output here to the mixer. And as you can hear, this is the signal we're sending into Loopman. First, I'll need to rewind my cassette here. And to be able to manipulate the speed of the playback after we recorded this, I usually leave the speed knob in the center position when I'm recording a sound. Now, like I said before recording, I need to attenuate this signal very much. And unless you have really detailed metering, for your levels, it's really just a guessing game. But let's just turn it down until we can barely hear it. I actually think this might even still clip the cassette, but let's have a go at it. So if you're happy with your settings, just press the record and the play button here at the same time to start recording.
and then of course you just wait until you're sure that everything you wanted to record on the cassette is on there. At this point we're also able to manipulate the speed of the motor and this would result in pitch shifting when we play it back at a constant speed. But that's something that you need to experiment with. And I think I have sufficient material on the cassette here, so let's stop the recording. And of course we're still hearing what we are sending into Loopman. Of course we're listening to the true output. So now to avoid confusion, let's remove the signal from the input altogether. Now let's rewind the tape. Now to hear what we just recorded, we need to switch to the output of Loopman, which is here, located to the right. And let's listen to what we recorded and what the quality is. Let's press play. And as you can hear, this signal is still saturated and it's also very silent because the output is also just line level. To get Loopman up to modular levels, you really should boost the signal with something like mutable instrument ears or anything else that's able to boost line level signals to modular levels. So let's connect the output of Loopman to the input of ears. And the output of ears is just going into the mixer. And let's listen to how it sounds now. And as you can hear, even though we attenuated the signal quite a lot with the flying attenuator here, we still saturated the cassette, but I think this can be a really nice effect. If you want it even cleaner, you need to attenuate the signal you're sending in even more. It would have been nice to have built-in attenuation and conversion up to modular levels, but yeah. So now we can manipulate the speed here by turning this knob. And of course this is where the fun of playing around with a loopman lies. You can make these kind of stretched out washes from almost any type of sound you record in there. Now to make it a little more interesting and ambient sounding, let's add a reverb to this. And we can even slow down the motor so much that it actually stops. Now it's a little bit glitchy there, right at the end.
and as you can hear you can't expect high fidelity from Loopman but you can expect these really degraded washes of sound Now additionally you can control the speed of the motor with external CV. Let's connect an LFO to the speed CV input to do this. And as you can hear I'm manipulating the speed of the motor by sending in an LFO. Now I'm sending in a bipolar LFO, but Loopman only reacts to positive voltages. And what's perhaps unexpected is that positive voltages slow down the motor. Let me demonstrate by just using an offset from Mats. So now I'm sending in 10 volts. Let's turn the voltage down to zero and let's turn the voltage up again and you'll hear as I turn up the voltage that the motor slows down and turning the knob to the left this means sending negative voltages doesn't change anything. Let's connect the LFO again. Now what you additionally can do is use a trigger to trigger a built-in low-pass gate. For this, you need to listen to the gate output here. And we need some kind of trigger. I'm just going to use a random gate coming from Pamela's new workout. And you can do really cool things by using Loopman like this. Now to demonstrate something else with a Loopman, I recorded uh, this note. And I want to show you what happens if you connect a gate to the speed CV input. And even though this gate is immediate, there is no slope to the gate. Because this is a mechanical motor, there always will be some mechanical slew. And if you fine-tune this, this can really yield interesting results. Now another feature here on Loopman is this loop section here. It's not completely clear to me why it's there. I'm just going to connect a VCO to the loop input. And as you can hear, nothing's happening until I press this switch. Pressing this switch mixes whatever you connect to this input jack with the recording.
You probably noticed that there's a sensor here with a little switch. This is a light sensitive sensor. Let me first turn on some extra light here. When we switch this switch in the up position, this sensor becomes active. And whenever there's more light hitting this sensor, it registers a positive voltage and the motor of Loopman will slow down. It's just as if we're sending in a positive voltage. So if we then cover this sensor, the motor speeds up again and the pitch goes up. And of course, depending on how much light there is in your room or on stage, this will change the speed of the motor more or less. It might not be obvious, and I don't really know where it is, but there is a built-in microphone in Loopman. So when we just record without connecting anything into the input here, I should be able to record my voice. Let me try to move in a little bit closer without bumping into my stand. So when I now talk, we should be able to play this back later, just by playing back what we recorded on the cassette. So I recorded a bunch of stuff. And let's have a listen to how it sounds when we play this back. So when I now talk, I should be able to play this back. Let's turn down the reverb a little bit. The fun is that we can slow down our voice like this. Uh, Let's just try it one more time. Stop screaming, I don't know why. Probably just because it's a really happy. And let's just use the built in low pass gate this time. This will be it for this video. If there's any questions about Loopman, please ask them in the comments. I hope you learned something in this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.